2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1. Then Elijah said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time. That's enough to dance about right there. Let me back up. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time. Shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shickle? Two measures of barley for a shickle in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord, on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? He said, Behold, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat thereof. And there were four leprous men at the entering end of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city. We shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall but live. If they kill us, we shall but die. And they arose in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Why, brother preacher? For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise. There were four, verse three, leprous men at the entering end of the gate. They said one to another, why sit we here until we die? If you're not scared to grab the person's hand that's next to you, you know, you all have kind of been kind of relaxed in your state. Uh, mass mandates, but we're still wearing them back home. But if you're not scared to uh, talk to the person next to you, look at them in the eye. Quick, grab them by the hand. They're your husband. They're your wife, some of y'all. So I hope y'all ain't scared to grab their hand. And uh, look at that person dead in the eye for just a few minutes. I'm glad you have a timer up because I sure want to keep my time too. Look at that person dead in the eye. Look at them. Look at them. And tell that person I have some good news for you. And the news is, it started in misery, but it's ending in victory. Would you tell somebody else, it started in misery, but it's ending in victory. in misery but it's ending in victory thank you Jesus and don't mind me it's kind of warm in here if I sweat I'm gonna sweat but I'm gonna keep on preaching try to understand that uh, your miracle and I kind of started on this this morning from another scripture is not wrapped up in what you've lost but your miracle is wrapped up in what you have left let me say it one more time now. Your miracle is not wrapped up in what you lost, but your miracle is connected to what you have left. See, first of all, you have to understand what a miracle is. And I know a lot of folks are saying miracles are not for the believer, they're for the unbeliever. Well, that's true too, but miracles are for the believer as well. Because when you look at a miracle, you don't have to get a, a big deep definition or the big dictionary or Wikipedia or any of that kind of stuff. When you look at a miracle, a miracle is simply something that happens that's not supposed to happen. It's something that happens that's not supposed to happen. Therefore, even in this particular season of our life, and since God has allowed us to maintain our life in the pandemic, you got to be careful how you treat folk. But you're saying, brother preacher, because the same folk that you mistreat might have your miracle in their hand. 
You got to be careful how you treat folk. A miracle is something that happens that's not supposed to happen. So you got to understand that, that, that your miracle is not wrapped up in what you've lost, but it's wrapped up in what you have left. And I want you to know that what you have left is enough to start all over again. You hear what I said? It's enough for you to start all over again. So uh, oftentimes uh, in struggles and, and in times of despair, you must notice and understand that uh, 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 there's no, oftentimes no celebration if there's no struggle. I'm going to say it again. Oftentimes there's no celebration if there is no struggle because this journey, this walk with the Lord is not only to be enjoyed, but it's to be endured. I don't understand because all the time you come to church, you ain't going to feel like come on here shouting and dancing and sliding frontwards and backwards at the same time. This journey with the Lord is not only to be enjoyed, but it's to be endured. When you look in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, you know, we, 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 we like to quote scriptures oftentimes and we compile scriptures and they, 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 we compile different scriptures into one to make it sound real good. And we compile this scripture oftentimes that the race is not given to the swift. Neither the battle to the strong, and we stop right there. We say, but the ones, but to the ones that endure it to the end, well, it does not say it just like that. But when you read in Ecclesiastes 9 and 10, it says, Whatsoever your hands find to do, do it with all your might, because there's no work, there's no device. My God, in the grave, whether thou goest. Then it says, I perceive that the race is not given to the swift. Neither the battle to the strong, but nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. And then when you flip over into the, the New Testament, over in Matthew chapter 24 and around verse 13, it says, He that endure to the end shall be saved. I, I want you to know that this race, my God, this walk with God uh, is not only to be enjoyed, but it's to be endured. And, and, and as a matter of fact, uh, when, when, when the angel came to Mary and told her she was getting ready to have a child, and, and over in Luke chapter 1 and verse 45, the Bible, the Bible says, uh, surely there shall be a performance. That, that means God is going to do everything uh, that he promised he's going to do. My God, sometimes it does not happen in our timing. Sometimes it does not happen when we want it to happen. But I got good news for you. I want you to know that if God says it, he's going to bring it to pass. Clap your hand and shout hallelujah. So, so, so what we're dealing with today, we're dealing with on the day of Pentecost. This is the church's anniversary. This is the church's birthday, should I say. And we're dealing with Pentecost Sunday. But we're really dealing with more than that. Because when you look in uh, 2 Kings chapter 6 as a segue or a springboard to chapter 7, you will read what the Bible says, And the sons of the prophet said unto Elijah, Behold, now the place where we dwell is too small for us. It's too small. He says, Let us go, I pray thee, unto Jordan. And take thence every man a beam and let us make a place there where we may go and dwell. And Elijah said unto them, go. And uh, one said, uh, be content. I pray that you will go with thy servants. And Elijah said, I'll go with you. And when he went with them, there came the, they came to Jordan and they cut down some wood. This is in 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 5. But as one was cutting down some wood, as he was felling or cutting down some trees, uh, there was an axe head that he had and it fell into the water. Now let me stop right there and let you know that the axe head, uh, and I'm going to take this back up to chapter 7 and I'll be done, that this axe head uh, is symbolic of the cutting edge of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the axe head is symbolic of the power of God. What we're dealing with in so many of our churches, and I thank God for overseeing McNair, what we are dealing with uh, in so many of our churches, we, we have a church where more, than, where more than a half need the Holy Ghost and less than half have it. 
I'm going to say that again. Because, see, the, 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 the devil is not studying. That's what the old folks used to say. They're not studying what you did, my God, 10 years ago, or what you did back in 1990, what you did in 87, what you did in 2003. But the devil's concerned about what you're doing right now. And it's a travesty for us to be in a holiness church and not have the Holy Ghost. Y'all won't holler back at me. My God. Dancing is wonderful. I like to dance. I, I like to try to dance. Dancing is wonderful. Running and jumping is wonderful. But when you get through dancing, when you get through jumping, you got to have some power. That's why we have so many folk that's weak as water because they don't have the Holy Ghost. My God. And let me share something with you. When there's no anointing in the church, I'm not talking about this church, but when there's not an, an, an anointing in a ministry, the more ice cream and cake it takes to keep the church going. Because we're living in a time now where folks said, if I can't move you in the flesh, the spirit, because I don't have a prayer life, I don't consecrate, I don't pass. And if I can't move you in the spirit, I'll move you in the flesh. My God. Here this young man is cutting down some wood. He said, he tells Elijah, he says, the place where we dwell is too small for us. It's time to expand. And I, as I was reading that scripture today, the Holy Ghost said, tell overseer McNair that expansion is here. There's a, there's a word, God is expanding us. God is enlarging our territory. The place, isn't that something that the Lord is moving to such a magnitude that they have to expand the ministry. And as he was cutting down some wood, the Bible says that the axe that he was using to cut down the tree it fell into the Jordan River and uh, I want you to know my God uh, Mount Mariah Raleigh and all of our friends that have joined us on tonight uh, the only way you'll be able to build anything uh, be it marriage, be it ministry uh, be it family be it friendship uh, is if you build in the power of the Holy Ghost that's the problem we're doing. We're trying to build aside from the Holy Ghost. And Psalms 127 and 1 says, except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that build it. You can follow every principle of marriage. You, you can follow every principle of ministry. You can follow every principle of, of parenting, but still fail if you're not doing it in the power of the Holy Ghost. God, 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 God told Zerubbabel, he told Zerubbabel through the prophet Zechariah. In Zechariah 4 and 6, he said, I know the temple needs to be rebuilt, but I want you to know that it's not going to be done by your might, my God, nor by power, but by your spirit, saith the Lord. Yeah, I, I want you to know this young man said, sir, he tells Elijah, I was cutting down some wood. And uh, as I was cutting down the wood, the axe head that I was using was borrowed. And uh, he says, alas, master, that word alas means uh, it means to express concern or distress. And he's, you got to remember always that the power of God on your life, my God, is not your own. My God, you don't own it. And, uh, and the travesty of our churches, some of our churches today, is that we have a whole lot of people that really didn't have a whole lot on the other side. Maybe folk didn't know who they were on the other side, but they came into the house and they've gotten positions and stuff. And if you're not careful, uh, folk will begin to feel that they are Sunday morning. My God. And ain't nothing going to happen unless they do it and, and nothing's going to happen unless they're up and I want you to understand uh, this power that God has given you uh, is not your home because uh, the, the man said it was borrowed my God God gave you the power somebody clap your hand and shout hallelujah it was borrowed. It was borrowed. I'm just about done now. It was borrowed. The gifts that God has bestowed upon you, my God, uh, mm, the blessings that God has given you in your life, 
Mm. It's, uh, it's, it's because of who you are in the spirit. Because if you don't recognize that God gives you the power, you wake up like Samson. My God. Samson went to the wrong barber shop. And uh, he went in. My God. He had a natural when he went in. Uh, and he came out with a flat top. You got to be careful whose head you lay your Come on here. Whose lap you lay your head in. Because there's some folk that want to know the secret to your success. Uh, there's some folk that want to know what makes you tick. Uh, there's some folk that come on here. They want to know the secret to your success. Uh, but we got news for them. Uh, somebody said, well, I cannot understand uh, how God is blessing you and God's not blessing me. Uh, and we were all doing dirt together. Well, let me share the problem. Let me, let me share the secret. Uh, the secret is I had enough sense to say, Lord, I'm sorry. That's the secret. I had enough sense uh, to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Because oftentimes when you deal with Negroes and Negrettes, uh, oftentimes those that sin with you will sin against you. I'm good. I'm going to make it. Come on here. I got a round trip ticket. Come on. Overseer being good to me, so I'm going to go right on and preach. Okay. Oftentimes, those that will sin with you uh, will sin against you. Uh, doing the same thing, talking the same thing, going to the same places, uh, and they'll sin against you, and they'll tell all your business uh, and try to throw you up under the bus, but the devil's a liar. Uh, you've got to know in this season uh, that the devil cannot hinder you, and the devil cannot stop you because you have a a call on your life. Clap your hand and shout glory. It's borrowed. It's borrowed. Don't, don't, see, don't you forget to give God the glory. Don't, don't, don't you get so lifted up and puffed up, my God, until you can't give God the glory. Come on here. Preach one good sermon and now folk can't talk to you. You got to you got to add your tents. Ain't even don't have license the first. Come on here. And you 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 come you 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 don't want to talk to folk and deal with folk. The devil is a liar. Come on here. One thing that God has done in my ministry, I have never professed to be the greatest preacher. I'm not the slouchest preacher neither. But one thing about it is I always try to stay humble. Get up again, get up off us in this church. Act like we've never done nothing wrong. Act like we've never said a cuss word. Act like we've never had a bad thought. Get up off us here. This is Pentecost Sunday. Let's tell the truth at least on today. Come on here. It's God that saved us. It's God that come on. You ain't forgotten nothing that you did on the other side. It's just covered by the blood. Uh -huh. It's just covered by you ain't forgot how to smoke. Come on here. You ain't forgot how to trap it like it's hot and shake it like a salt shaker. You ain't forgot none of that stuff. It's just covered by the blood. <laughs> Look at somebody tell me it's covered by the blood. Come on, tell somebody it's covered by the blood. And see what happens is some of us come to church, but we ain't really been delivered. So when folks look at us crazy, when folks step on our toes, we ready to fight. I'm, I'm leaving the church. They acting crazy with me. Come on, I ain't taking any of this. I'm going to give them a pill. The devil is a lot. No, he's, come on here. He's telling the truth. You need to be saved and delivered. What we have to do as, as, as leaders, we have to be careful that we don't put folk in positions that have not been delivered. See, one thing, we oftentimes folk put folk in positions that have money, folk that have prestige, folk that have degrees, and we like all that. Ooh, they, when they, when they, got, they got a master's, and they, uh -huh, they, they, they got a Ph.D. Well, we got a Ph.D. too. We maybe didn't go to school, but we have one too, Ph.D. We've been purged, healed, and delivered. got a PhD. You don't know the hell that I went through to get where I am. Come on here. And you mean to tell me I'm going to come on, I'm going to back down and cower down and act like God ain't done nothing for me. And come on here, all the mess God brought me out of. I was a mess wrapped up in a mess trying to get out of a mess and God brought me out and you don't think I'm going to give God the glory? I don't care if you look. I don't care if you clap. I don't care if you don't get with me, but I owe God a praise. Come on, clap those hands and go crazy for 30 seconds. Come on. The, 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 the accent, 
Where, where did he lose it? He was cutting down a tree. Where did he lose it? He lost it in the process of service. Woo. I'm going to dig into this just a little bit more. I'm going to be done. I'll come to furthest. He lost it in the process of service. You got to understand that uh, he, was, he became careless with the power. This is, this is Holy Ghost Pentecost Sunday. He became careless with the power. Now, now, now let me share something with you. Uh, there are some folk that need the Holy Ghost even in here. And uh, you got to understand, you cannot get filled with the Holy Ghost until you repent. God ain't going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. He said, whoo, they don't legalize marijuana, baby. I got some arthritis. I got to smoke some weed. The devil is a liar. Baby, I got the spirit of God. The devil is a liar. You can, the, the, the filling of the Holy Ghost or repentance always precedes the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And one thing that we have has happened to the church, we've allowed folk to go on and dance and run and jump and work, but we have not challenged folk to get saved and get delivered. I'm going to go. Good to see you, son. I'm going to go. I'm going to go even a little deeper because a lot of us got up and we, 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 we repeated Romans 10, 9, and 10 that if thou shalt believe the, in the Lord thy God and confess with thy mouth, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Well, that's good. But let me share something with you. We have a whole lot of folk that have repeated, but they haven't repented. There's a difference in repeating and repenting because when you repent, that's a military term that means to do an about face. You're headed in one direction and you go in a whole nother direction. You, you don't want to do a 360 because if you do a 360, you just end up right where you started from. My God, you want a 180 because when you do a 180, you're going in a whole nother direction. God, there was some no good folk I was dealing with. I got to let them go. There was some stuff I was doing. I got to let it go because I really want to be saved. I want to be whole and I want to be right. My God, I want you to know we have too many folk that have repeated but they haven't repented. So when folk repeat and don't repent then we have a whole lot of folk that like to shout but don't want to shift. <laughs> Hello lights! Then we have a lot of folk that like to shout but they don't want to shift. Because when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, my God, he changes your whole disposition. You, 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 you got to understand in, in, in John chapter 7. I'm about done now. I'm about done. In John chapter 7, the Bible says in John 7 and 37, uh, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried. And he said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And uh, we used to sing this song in our church growing up. He that believeth on me. Y'all, some of y'all remember something. Jesus said it. Y'all remember something. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the spirit which they that believe on should receive. For the Holy Ghost had yet not been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Let me share something with you. When they hung Jesus on that cross, they tried to make him look as bad as they could. Hung him between two wrong people. Two thieves, one on the left and one on the right. Jesus, as the Bible says, was the man in the middle. And they tried to make Jesus look as bad as they could. And they hung him, and when they hung him, my God, the one on the left died a blasphemer. The one on the right died a believer. But Jesus died a benefactor. The one on the left died in folly. The one on the right died in favor, but Jesus died fulfilling. Oh, my God. The one on the left died in grief. The one on the right died in grace. But Jesus died in glory. My God. The one, the one, the one on the left died a hassler. The one on the right died hoping. But Jesus died for humanity. The one on the left died a conniver. 
The one on the right died in kindness, but Jesus died king of kings. The one on the left died. He died in rejection. The one on the right died in reception. But Jesus died for redemption. I got to get out of here. The one on the left died in sin. The one on the right died from sin. But Jesus died for sin. The one on the left, he died, oh God, a sinner. The one on the right died, a, savior, a saint, but the, the man in the middle died, a savior. And I stopped by to tell you, Mount Moriah, that can't nobody do you like Jesus. Hey, you ought to clap your hand and just shout, nobody. So, understand here, I got to bid y'all good evening now. But uh, they could not receive the Holy Ghost uh, because the Holy Ghost had yet not been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. And uh, now since Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, uh, you cannot receive the, uh, the Holy Ghost until you glorify God. Uh, and they could not receive the Holy Ghost because Jesus had not yet been glorified. But now you can't receive the Holy Ghost until you glorify God. So when you come to the altar and repent of your sins, you come crying and we come ugly and we come out here, we come in conviction and sadness and grief uh, because of all the stuff that we did on the other side. Uh, but when you come down to the altar to receive the Holy Ghost, uh, you ought to come down with clapping in your hands. You ought to come down with joy in your heart. You ought to come down giving God the praise because it's the merry heart that God feels. Uh, let me see the hands of everybody say, man of God, I got the Holy Ghost. So come on, come on. Now lift that hand up and shout power, power. So when you look, and I got to get out of here now, about the Holy Ghost, and you begin to look at what the Holy Ghost does. You understand when you get filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible. It talks about three types of tongues. And I'm bidding you good evening now. Talks about new tongues. And uh, the Bible says over in Mark chapter 16 and verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils my god they shall speak with new tongues and uh, these new tongues refer to the new life because uh, the bible says in second corinthians 5 and 17 therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature Whole things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you speak in a new tongue. That what you're saying, brother preacher, you stop cussing folk out. I've never seen so many folks say they save and cuss folk out. My God. You stop gossiping about folk and trying to ruin people's credibility. If I'm hitting you, just say ouch. Just say something. Be a bobblehead. You stop speaking lies and you speak truth when you have the new tongue. But uh, the Bible also talks about other tongues. Over in Acts chapter 2, and uh, it refers to other languages of the earth. Beside the native language, my God, a language that you did not go to school to learn. And when you, when you really get filled with the Holy Ghost, I'll never forget when I got filled with the Holy Ghost at my grandfather's church. They didn't have to teach me how to speak in tongues. They didn't have a tongue speaking, teaching, speaking, class 101, how to speak in tongues. I had repented of my sins. And I wanted the Holy Ghost more than anything in my life. And the Lord filled me with his spirit. My God, you've got to understand when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, there are other tongues. And uh, these are not native tongues. These are tongues that you did not go to school to learn. Also called tongues with a mission. But 
Then there is one more tongue, my God, and it's called unknown tongues. Mm -hmm. And that's found over in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And it says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But uh, he that prophesieth speaketh not unto men, but speaketh rather to men, to edification, exhortation, and to comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifies the church. Uh, Paul was not, my God, criticizing tongues, but uh, he was dealing with the gift of tongues. Everybody does not have the gift of tongues, but everybody that received the Holy Ghost will speak in tongues. Yeah. Yeah. Now let me let me share something with you. The Holy Ghost, my God, don't come with tongues. Let me mess with your theology. The Holy Ghost don't come with tongues. Tongues come with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost don't come with tongues. Tongues come with the Holy Ghost. If Overseer McNair take me downtown to Raleigh to buy some shoes, I don't go downtown and tell the man or the woman, whoever's selling the shoes, give me a pair of tongues. Tell them, give me a pair of shoes. Because tongues come with the shoe. You'll get that on Wednesday. Tongues come with the shoe. Come on here. Holy Ghost don't come with tongues. Tongues come with the Holy Ghost. My God today. I want you to understand as you look at the tongues and look at the Holy Ghost. Here in 2 Kings chapter 6, and I'm out of here now, dealing with this young man. He was doing the work of ministry. He was cutting down the wood. The axe head that he was using fell into the Jordan River. And now all he is left with is a handle. And the handle or wood in spirit always symbolizes the flesh. So what we have now, we have this young man with a wooden handle trying to cut down a tree that produces wood. We have flesh trying to cut on, cut down flesh. Mm, my God today. Ah, God. And so what you're saying, Brother Preacher, we have a lot of people that they're, they're swinging the axe head, the axe, but the head is gone, the power is gone. They're swinging, and there's no chips that's flying off the tree. There, 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 there's no cutting that's being cut off the tree because they don't have no power. He's swinging and there's no anointing. Swinging and there's no change. Well, how did you lose it, brother preacher? Well, I lost it dealing with some no good folk. I, I lost it when I stopped coming to church. I, I, I lost it when I stopped giving my tithes and giving my offering. I lost it when I stopped being faithful and obedient to leadership. I lost it, my God, when I, I, I ceased from praying and seeking God. I lost it when I stopped passing. I, I lost it, my God, in the process of doing service. But uh, uh, Elijah looks at the man and said, well, where did you lose? He said, fell in the Jordan River, fell right down here. And, and, and Elijah cut down a stick threw it into the Jordan River, and by the power of the Holy Ghost, my God, the axe head and the stick connected, and the axe head began to flow. And Elijah said, pick it back up again. I, I want you to know, my God, Mount Moriah, Raleigh, that uh, the Holy Ghost has come on this Pentecost Sunday. And uh, if you lost it somewhere, go back and get it back, my God. Because what the Holy Ghost does, the Holy Ghost convicts you of sin. The, the Holy Ghost is the comforter. It is the paracletus. It is our helper in times of need. And he went and picked up the power and got the power back. Well, in the seventh chapter, and I'm done now the seventh chapter, the Assyrians had came and besieged Samaria. When they came and besieged Samaria, there was a famine in the land. And uh, it was such a famine that uh, uh, ass's head was being sold for exuberant, exuberant price. And they were eating doves dung and uh, then they, co co they, they, they commenced to cannibalism and they were eating children. 
because they had got so hungry that uh, they began to do what they needed to do to survive. But uh, in the seventh chapter of Second Kings, the Bible says that uh, Elijah got a word from the Lord. And, uh, and he tells them by this time tomorrow. God is getting ready to give you the victory <laughs> by this time tomorrow <laughs> what's been holding you back is going to turn you loose <laughs> by this time tomorrow <laughs> if you've been sick it's going to have to loose you <laughs> and 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 <laughs> the Bible lets us know <laughs> that there were four leprous men <laughs> at the entering in of the gate <laughs> They said, why sit we here until we die? If we go into the city, there is a famine in the city. And we die in the city. If, if, if we sit right here and do nothing, we'll die also. So if we're going to die, we might as well die trying. They got up and removed from the place. And the Bible lets us know as they begin to walk God began to send deliverance and I want you to know Mount Moriah as you begin to move in the spirit God has the power to bring you out as they begin to walk it looked like God put a PA system in their feet and every time they move there was a sound of horses there was a sound of chariots there was a sound of a great horse and it ran out all the enemies it brought deliverance to Samaria and I got good news for you it started in misery, misery but it's ending in victory thanks thanks be unto God that gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I want you to know somebody said man of God I've been crying I've been going through I've been in distress what am I getting ready to do you got to go over to Psalms 30 and 5 where the Bible the Bible says weeping which I had a preaching church weeping may endure we 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 may endure for a night but John John Joy comes in the morning. Got news for the devil. I want the devil to know that I cried my last year yesterday. It's over, devil. You, you should have killed me when you had the chance. But I'm here now. Already been to the water. I already been baptized. I already been converted. And I feel all right. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lady Ashley. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Barry, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified. Free me forever. One day, he's coming back. Glorious day. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Get somebody by the hand. Oh, Ooh, I'm done now. Would you get him by the hand? Oh, look at them dead in the eye and say, neighbor. 
put a tune in your voice uh, and say, neighbor, uh, it started in misery, but it's ending in victory. Uh, many are the afflictions uh, of the righteous, uh, but God uh, shall deliver me uh, out of them all. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good morning. Uh, good evening, y'all. Uh, I got news for the devil. Uh, it's over now. Uh, I got news for the devil. Uh, I made it out. Uh, what should have killed me uh, has kept me alive. Uh, surprise! Uh, I'm still alive. Uh, and on Pentecost, uh, I uh, made up my mind. Uh, I'm going to praise God. Uh, and I'm not praising God uh, in the dark. Uh, but I'm praising in him uh, in the light. Uh, go to lesson 27. Uh, what does that say, man of God? Uh, the Lord is uh, my light uh, and uh, my salvation. Uh, who whom uh, whom shall I be? Uh, somebody Oh, got to get out of here. Got to go home now. Somebody say, man of God, I have an emergency. And what I did, I called 911. They came to my rescue. But when the saints have an emergency, we don't down 911. We go to Psalms 91 and 1. He that dwelleth, I wish I had church. That dwelleth in the secret place of the most high. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Wave that right hand, wave it in the air, wave it like you just don't care, and say it started in misery, but it's sinning in victory. Tap your hand and give him praise. Come on, tap your hand and give him praise. I'm not done, I'm going to quit. Everybody standing, everybody. Everybody up. Some of y'all, you've been sitting long enough. Get on up. We got to go home, y'all. Wave that right hand one more time. Put your preaching voice on. And say, it started in misery. Don't sound good. Say, it started in misery. But... <laughs> It's sending in victory. If you have the victory, go to clapping your hands and give it free. Woo! Hands uplifted. Hands uplifted. Never mind. Never mind the heat. I'm not worried. I know I've been sweating. I can take a nice shower when I get back to the room. Never mind the heat. God wants to do something here tonight. This, this, we know we have a lot of family and friends that's visiting. We thank God for all of you. Mount Moriah, this is a powerful church. God does not want us to live beneath our privilege. Man of God, I'm just happy being saved. No, you need more than that. Because the Bible says when Jesus was resurrected, in John chapter 20, I believe it's 20 and 22, he came into the room and he said, <sighs> he breathed on them. The pneuma of God. And said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. We're so happy that folk come in the church, but you got to have the power of God. I'm telling you young people, the Holy Ghost will keep you when you don't want to be kept. 
I know a lot of folks say it's not six o'clock, it's six o'clock. I want to be saved, but ooh, I just can't keep myself. The Holy Ghost will keep you when you can't be keep yourself. Holler back at you, boy. Because it ain't nothing special about putting on white when we have a black heart. Rewind. It's nothing about putting on. Come on here. It, it, it's, just, it's, just like, it's just like putting, putting clothes in a washing machine and don't put no soap in there. They come out, they still going to be musty. Jesus said, we're getting ready to pray. We're going to go home. I don't want nobody to leave me. Jesus said, Terry told his disciples, Terry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued. That word in the Greek is enduo. It means to be clothed. It means to put on some clothes. Come on here. Once you, you saved now, but you, you can't be naked. That's why the same idea is even over in Ephesians 6 when, when Paul told the church at Ephesus, put on the whole armor of God. In duo, you got to be clothed because a real mother and father clothes their children. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, if ye being evil know how to give your children good gifts, how much more will the Father give you the Holy Ghost for them that ask for it?